guys, welcome back to Nick's Reads. Please feel free to subscribe to this channel if you enjoy bookish content like I do and give this video a like if you enjoy book hauls. I certainly do. I just cannot stay away from Book Outlet for long. I absolutely love shopping on that site because you get so many great books for a third or even less of the price. I also have three bonus books to show you guys because these weren't part of the actual Book Outlet order. I got them from somewhere else but I will include them in this video because they're new. So the first one is Coraline by Neil Gaiman. I got this from Book Depository. The reason I got this is because I recently filmed a favorite books video and I mentioned this, so I noticed that I actually haven't reread this book in a while. I don't even have a copy here with me. This is a fantastic, eerie, spooky, middle grade story about Coraline who moves into a new apartment building with her parents, she's an only child. She feels a bit neglected, a bit bored, so she goes exploring. And during that time, she finds a tiny door and she opens that door. And when she goes through, she finds a much better world than hers with a different mom. So it's her mom, but she has buttons for eyes. She learns a few lessons along the way. It's a great story, I recommend it to anyone. Then I got Dune by Frank Herbert from Indigo just because I really couldn't find this in a used bookstore or on book outlet. This is part of my summer TBR, which is why I got it. I'm not going to attempt to give you guys a cohesive summary of the plot because I really couldn't, even if I already watched the first movie. I'm just hoping to myself that this is going to be a new sci-fi series that I will love. And then I discovered a little free library setup in my neighborhood. It's like the kind of box where you can leave a book and take a book. I left the notebook from Nicholas Sparks. I featured it in my unhaul video. And then I picked up this, The Five People You Meet in Heaven by Mitch album. I just recognized the title, it is beloved, so that's why I picked it up, even though it is usually not something that I would read. Moving on to my actual book outlet order, I was good though because I only checked out the items that were actually already on my TBR. I attempted to group them together by genre, so I'm gonna start with a chiclet or rom-com book. It's Love Your Life by Sophie Kinsella. I was looking online for some kind of romance or rom-com book set in Amalfi in Italy because that is where I'll be traveling this summer. So I just kind of really wanted to get in the mood. Sophie Kinsella is just really good in writing rom-com chiclet, if you want to call it that, for when you need something a bit easy and breezy, you know, not too thrilling, but just something that will make you feel warm and fuzzy inside. This is about Ava. She goes on, a, I think it's writer's retreat on the Amalfi Coast where she meets a certain someone. Then they go back to London. It turns out to be a bit more complicated than just a summer romance. So along those lines. Moving on to the cozy mystery genre, which is something new for me. I started reading this year. I picked up Homicide and Halo Halo by Pia, no, sorry, Mia P. Mananzara. And this is the second book in the series. The first one was Arsenic and Adobo. I'm gonna be honest with you, the first one was a three-star read, generously rated. It was not my perfect read, honestly, but this is a Filipino author and it's kind of cool to read about stuff that you grew up with, be it culturally or food. So I do want to give this author a second chance. So what happens in the first book is Lila's family runs a little restaurant. Her ex-boyfriend, who is also like a, a food critic, goes to the restaurant and is suddenly killed by maybe their food. Lila has to do some amateur sleuthing to figure out what happened and to save her family business. I want to go into this book blindly, but I guess there's going to be a second murder. Next, I have Finlay Donovan is Killing It by El Cosimano. This book has been making its rounds on booktube, and as I mentioned, cozy mystery is usually not my thing. So what actually sold me is that uh, Kayla, books and Lala, she said that this is for fans of Sophie Kinsella, so I was sold. <laughs> Finley is a struggling single mom of two. She meets up with her literary agent in a restaurant or in a cafe and starts talking about a murder plot that she's writing. Someone overhears them and think that she's a hitman for hire. They approach her and she, 
I guess because she's in difficult financial circumstances, agrees <laughs> and chaos ensues from there. Because of that amateur element, it also reminds me a bit of Only Murders in the Building, which I am enjoying. Moving on to a bit more serious murder. This is Flowers Over the Inferno by Ilaria Tutti. Why I picked this up is because of Storygraph. I picked up one book that was recommended to me on the app, which was The Inheritance of Orquidea Divina, which I ended up loving. If you watch my channel, you know that. So this random recommendation that I've never heard of and I've never heard of the author, this caught my eye. I read the plot and I was intrigued. So I decided to put it on my TBR and I was actually surprised that it was on Book Outlet because this is translated work. Um, the author is Italian. The reason I picked this up is because one of the reviews said that they loved the superintendent because it's a very unusual setup. So it's a woman in her mid 60s who's investigating. There was a gruesome murder on the Italian mountainside where a man was found with his eyes gouged out and Teresa investigates. Next, I have my first Kazuo Ishiguro. It's Never Let Me Go, as it says on the top, Nobel Prize winner, so I hope it's good. This is part of my summer TBR as well, and I'm guessing that I will like this book. It's kind of like a five or at least four star prediction for me, so that's why I decided to buy it opposed to just getting it from the library. I know what this is about because I read the plot summary of the movie with, I think it's Kira Knightley, but I don't want to give anything away, so all I'm saying is this is about a group of kids who grow up in a boarding school and they later on figure out that it was not a normal boarding school. This is supposed to be completely devastating and it has a sci-fi element to it. I think I will like this one and I'm just really excited to read the first book from this author because he is really well loved. Next is Ariadne by Jennifer Saint. The reason I picked this up is because I saw someone recommend this for people who loved Madeline Miller, in my case, Achilles. I do have Circe, but I haven't read that yet. I was just interested in picking another Greek mythology retelling kind of story. And not gonna lie, instant regret that I didn't get this as a hardcover. It was also available in that version because this is a beautiful cover. <laughs> I guess this is the story of Ariadne, Princess of Crete. I will go into this blindly and hope to be positively surprised. Then I really wanted to pick up one of the books that was nominated for the Women's Prize for Fiction this year, and I settled on The Sentence by Louise Erdrich. This did not win the prize, it was Ruth Ozeki. But out of all the books, for some reason, the plot of this one intrigued me the most. This is described as a ghost story. I think it takes place in a bookstore and it also involves a complex marriage story. Again, I'm going to this book not knowing much, but I also just think that the cover is really gorgeous. Next is Sharks in the Time of Saviors by Kawhi Strong Washburn. This plot just sounded so different from anything I've read before. So what happens is that seven-year-old Nainoa falls off a ship and she gets rescued by a shark fetching her and bringing her back up in their jaw. This is a story by a Hawaiian author about a Hawaiian family and it has something to do with the Hawaiian gods. So that was enough to make me pick up this book. It was on somebody's best of 2021 list. I wish I could remember. The reviews seem overwhelming favorable for this book. So I think this is gonna be a winner. Next up is a book that I have already read since these arrived in the mail. It's A Certain Slant of Light by Laura Whitcomb. This is <laughs> a very angsty ghost love story and i'm kind of scared of how much i enjoy this <laughs> our main character helen is a ghost who has been roaming the earth for over 150 years nobody sees her because she is a ghost until one day she is going around school grounds one of the students actually looks at her from there on out an impossible love story unfolds and that is all i say about this book it is Kind of crazy. More to come in my July wrap up. <laughs> Next up is Pet by Aquaeke Emezi. I heard so many odd, weird, and good things about this. So that's why I picked it up because the plot seemed 
a bit outside of the box. So there's a monster called Pet that comes out of the main character's mom's paintings. I mean, this has to be good, right? Look at all the prizes it has won. Next is a book that also has been going around and I've heard so many great things about this. It's Piranesi by Susanna Clark. Everybody who reviews this book is super vague about it and I think that's part of the magic that the protagonist doesn't know what's going on so the reader doesn't know what's going on. It has something to do I think with the labyrinth, with a maze, that is all I know. I don't know if this is actually fantasy or it kind of looks like Greek retelling too or if it's all some kind of metaphor, we'll figure it out. But I really, really hope this is gonna be a fantasy book that I will enjoy a lot. Next is a book that has been on my TBR along with A Certain Slant of Light for years. That is one of the reasons why I picked these two up because I was just like, you know what, let's get these off the TBR. Let's just finally figure out if these are good or not. It's The Disappearances by Emily Bain Murphy. This takes place in a town where every seven years something disappears and it can be anything. It says that it can be scents, reflections, the stars in the sky, even the ability to dream. I hope our main character figures out what is happening and why this is happening. And lastly, I picked up Legend Born by Tracy Dion. So excited for this one. I was let down by a lot of adult fantasy books this year already. So I'm going back to YA because this is most likely going to be so easy to read, super fast paced, and I'm just hoping to be engrossed in this story. I vaguely know that this is about our main character, Brie, who loses her mom and she goes to, I think, university where then she meets a group of scholars that are kind of connected to some secret order that has to do with Merlin. Brie discovers some interesting new magical facts about herself. This has to do with her heritage, with her family. I think this is gonna be an awesome read and I can wait to dig in. So these were all the books I got for this summer haul. Please leave me a comment if you have read any of the books that I have showed and tell me how you liked them and let me know which one you think I should start. Thank you so much for watching. Leave this video a like if you've enjoyed this haul and please feel free to subscribe if you enjoy bookish content. I'll see you guys next time.